Hello everybody, welcome back to the ASUS RG YouTube channel. This is JJ once again, and we're going further into giving you guys information on the Mars 2, the world's fastest graphics card. So um, what we're gonna be doing today, and uh, right now in this video, is taking you through a little bit of a performance preview on what the actual Mars 2 has to offer in terms of high resolution, three panel based gaming, which is where definitely this card excels. So uh, before we jump into that, we'll go ahead and cover our test bed. So we've got our Rampage 3 Black Edition board, uh, which is the ideal board of choice, especially if you ever consider going over to two Mars graphics cards because of the spacing design. Uh, for users that are gonna only be considering one, then a board like our Maximus 4 Extreme um, or, or any of our P67 boards uh, or Z68 boards um, is gonna be fine. You're not gonna have any issues there. Powering the entire system, we have Corsair's AX1200 uh, power supply, they're gold rated PSU, so 90% efficiency. That's fantastic in terms of helping to ensure clean, reliable power and also keeping uh, the nose profile pretty, pretty quiet. Uh, we've got Corsair Dominator GT for our memory on our overclock test bed. We've got it running at uh, 1866. We have an Intel uh, Core i7-990X overclocked as well, uh, just a little bit shy, about 4.2 gigahertz, that way we can keep everything quiet. And uh, we've also got a Corsair uh, Force 3 120 gigabyte uh, based off of the latest generation Sand Force uh, controller. So we've got a pretty awesome system set up here, we're good to go, so let's go ahead and jump into the benchmarking and take a look at what we're going to be uh, showing you guys. So uh, first and foremost, we'll go ahead and we'll start off with synthetic. Uh, overall, we're kind of probably going to be focusing at uh, a couple of different things to give you guys a little bit of a over uh, overview on the performance potential. So we'll start off with Unigen. Uh, we'll jump into Crisis 2. Uh, we'll do uh, Total War Shogun uh, for you guys that love uh, real-time strategy as well as it takes advantage of huge high-level preset of fidelity. And uh, then we'll round it out from there. So uh, let's go ahead and first jump into Unigen here. We're going to go ahead and course set it to DirectX 11, uh, shaders will be set to high, antroscopic filtering will be set to 16, uh, full screen, and then running at a resolution of 5760 by 1080. Uh, we're going to go ahead and leave the NVIDIA control panel set to all its defaults, so you'll be good to go there. Of course, as in always, uh, when it comes down to you, the user itself, uh, one of the great things about the PC platform is that you can tweak and tune the system as you see fit, uh, whether that's with uh, custom uh, adjustments made within the NVIDIA control panel or in the game. So once again, this is just a little bit of a uh, kind of performance preview, uh, but of course, it will vary from system to system and based on configurations. Well, let's uh, go ahead and jump into it. First initial benchmark run of Unigen is wrapping up here, so we'll uh, be taking a look momentarily here to see what our frame rate uh, is uh, running on the Mars 2 and our platform as we can see here. I'll we'll go ahead and switch off the audio quickly. And you can see still that the system is overall uh, pretty quiet for being able to run this high level of a load um, at these resolution and these image quality settings, so pretty impressive. So we can see here, uh, definitely a nice run overall, a consistent average frame rate of 40 frames a second. And so of course, uh, even potentially, you could further that by some overclocking uh, potential and uh, with a maximum frame rate of up to about 90 frames. So definitely an impressive score, keeping in mind that we're running at a resolution of 5,760 by 1080. Our minimum frame rate only shows as a 9.7, but as I noted, uh, it's an anomaly that you have within the, the benchmarking parameter. So uh, what we're gonna go ahead and do is uh, just uh, rerun that, and uh, we'll come back and we'll show you uh, the actual new minimum frame rate once it's gone ahead and gone through the secondary run. Um, but that gives you that initial little bit of a performance preview. So from here, we'll go ahead and we'll uh, jump over to Crisis 2, but we're gonna go ahead and cut off right now, wait for the second run to finish up. And then from there, we'll go ahead and show you guys uh, the new uh, minimum frame rate score as well as show us a secondary validation run uh, just to go ahead and uh, give a little bit more confirmation to the first run as well. All right, we're back, folks, and it's uh, wrapping up right here, the secondary run. And uh, we can go ahead and see that overall our average frame rate is essentially the same at uh, 40 frames. And, but our minimum frame rate has now jumped up to 17.9 with our maximum frame rate approximately the same as the previous run at 91 
uh, in terms of your overall frame rate performance. But overall, a very impressive showing here for the Mars 2 in terms of showing us 40 frames at a resolution of 5,760 by 1080, um, running Unigen with essentially all the advanced features turned on in terms of tessellation, uh, DirectX 11 API protocols, and uh, everything that goes along with that. So we'll go ahead and we'll keep jumping further. So uh, at this point, let's go ahead and uh, get out of Unigen here. And quit out our run. And uh, next up here, as uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into uh, Total War Shogun 2. Uh, now, uh, the really awesome thing about uh, this benchmark is that Creative Assembly really took a lot of time to actually release a DirectX 11 patch and uh, open up a huge amount of graphical options that are available to you guys to really be able to push the fidelity envelope in the image quality settings. So we've gone ahead and installed the latest version of this and we're going to go ahead and launch it. And uh, we're going to take a look here at uh, the options that are available to you as the user. And then from there, we'll go ahead and we'll jump back out and, and, and run the benchmark. And as I noted before, uh, keep in mind that, of course, always, uh, you know, when it comes to gameplay, some people are going to want faster level of uh, performance and some people are going to want more image quality. So depending on your style of gameplay and kind of your uh, needs and wants when it comes to how you define the parameters for the game, uh, of course, you can always adjust the performance capability of your card. Now, for you guys that are really interested in terms of even pushing the envelope further, we will also be showcasing quad SLI performance in terms of what that brings to the table when we take uh, one Mars card and we add it with a second card and we run uh, those in tandem. So uh, stay tuned if you guys are interested in that. So we'll be uh, jumping in here into Total War in a moment and uh, we'll go ahead and show you guys the settings. And uh, from there, we'll jump into the benchmarking. So we can go ahead and get in here. We can see here we have essentially already defined everything to pretty much custom settings. You can see that we're already running at the 5060 by 1080 resolution. And uh, particle effects we have set to ultra. Um, we have the texture filtering set to antroscopic at 16 times. Texture quality is ultra. Depth of field is high, uh, which is also the maximum. Shader model 5. Direct X mode is 11. Unit detail ultra. Building detail ultra. Shadows Ultra, Unit Size Ultra, Maximum Fleet Size is Large, uh, Vertical Synchronization we have turned off, uh, Soft Shadows is on, Tessellation is on, Trees Ultra, Grass Ultra, Water Ultra, Sky Ultra, Terrain Quality is Ultra, uh, we have Distortion Effects enabled, um, HDR, Vignette, and SSAO, uh, which helps to uh, provide ambient shadow detailing. So pretty much as you can see, we've, we've pushed it to the limit, and we can already tell that this is being rendered in here in the game engine. It's very impressive in terms of its detailing. Uh, but let's go ahead and just uh, jump out of this here. And uh, we'll go ahead and set this up here, and we'll run our benchmark. So uh, we're going to go ahead and bring over our Steam client here, and uh, we're going to select Benchmark Game Settings. So this will go ahead and use all the previously defined settings that we just showed you guys and go ahead and run this on here. Uh, so we'll, we'll take a look and see what uh, the gameplay performance is. All right, so uh, we can see here that it's gone ahead and finished up on the run of uh, Total War Shogun 2, and we have an average frame rate of 39.975, so essentially 35 frames. So uh, overall quite impressive uh, for the level of detailing that's uh, present in that game and uh, the expansiveness of the character environments and all the detailing that's offered. So overall the Mars 2 continues to impress. So let's go ahead and... Uh, jump into what maybe everybody's most excited about, which is uh, Crisis 2, right? So we'll go ahead and uh, jump into Crisis here. 
and uh, we're going to go ahead and use uh, Bench Zones Automated Benchmark Utility for Crisis 2. We're going to go ahead and, of course, select Crisis 2. Uh, the DirectX 11 and High Resolution Patch have gone ahead and been applied to the game. We're going to go ahead and select the Ultra Preset Resolution, once again, 5000 Six, excuse me, 5,760 by 1080. Uh, we'll go ahead and have the map be the Times Square Adrenaline map. Uh, run, we're going to do one run. Uh, API, DirectX protocol, set to DirectX 11. Uh, we're going to be using Edge AA, and uh, the high resolution texture pack is currently on. So we'll go ahead and we'll add that to our queue, and we'll go ahead and do a run through. And uh, we can see here that it's gone ahead and given us an average frame rate of essentially 40 frames, 39.9 frames a second. So pretty awesome run in terms of uh, Crisis 2 maxed out at those settings, letting you see, of course, the gameplay uh, performance. So that kind of overall gives you a, a little bit of an overview and the expectation of what performance is that you can expect on the Mars U graphics card. For you guys that are interested in, of course, uh, performance potential at uh, lower resolutions, definitely check out our forums and uh, we'll definitely have that information available to you there. So as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, definitely leave them there on the YouTube page uh, or leave them at Twitter or at Facebook. Or as always, uh, visit www.asusrog.com forward slash forms. Thanks.